Young lady, I want you to stop seeing that shifty eye, dude. And whatever it is you've done in school, you can come out with it right now. What? Well, Mahoney, we know you were called into the vice principal's office. It, uh, just kind of slipped out, though. <laughs> slipped out? With your mouth, it's an avalanche. <laughs> now, for your information, Toothpick, I was called in so they can tell me I have a good chance for a scholarship. Hey! A scholarship? A scholarship. Hey, that's pretty, uh, baby girl. <laughs> you may recognize our next guest from that clip. It's Bernadette Stannis playing the iconic role of Thelma on Good Time. She's joining us now to talk life after the show, becoming an author, and so much more. Thank you so much for Thank joining us. Thank you so Thank much you for, for being having me. Here. I'm honored to be here. And we should first say congratulations in Chicago to uh, receive an award for female empowerment. You have done so much in Thank your career. Thank you so much. That's wonderful. <laughs> talk about how life has been since the show. It's been really, really wonderful. You know, the show afforded me so many different things to be able to do, um, to go places, to just do things that I've, I'm sure I would never have been able to do, you know, and I, um, I have two daughters and, and just raising them was just fun, you know, it was that kind of thing. Um, I'm an author, mm -hmm. as you know, yep. uh, that, that just came out of that life. Um, I traveled a lot, I did a lot of plays, I learned a lot about people, um, and from that I wrote my first book, and then my second book, and my third book. <laughs> and you're still acting, you got a project coming out, right? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. It's a, it's really a documentary. Okay. Yeah, we're working on that as behind the scenes in good times. Because there was a lot, I mean, that time in television, that was such a groundbreaking show. Yeah. Because you guys tackled a lot of issues that the other sitcoms were kind of shying away from. They were heavy, but it was still funny. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, we had wonderful writers on that show. And, and you know, Norman Lear, being the producer, you know, he always stretched it a little bit too far. You know, yeah. not too far, but far. Yeah. I know. Uh, now it's too far. <laughs> But um, we touched on uh, teen pregnancy, we touched on drugs, we touched on cancer, we touched on, um, well, dying, mm -hmm. you know, daddy dying, and, and surviving through it all. I mean, we had so many different changes in the show, but the show survived mm -hmm. because it was very real. It was the first black African-American whole family. Yes, And absolutely. I give, you know, Miss Esther Rowe a lot of credit for that, mm -hmm. you know. And we had a strong dad, yeah, you did. Johnny, Johnny was yeah. great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you stay in touch with any other guests? I do. I stay in touch with all of them. Of course, you know, Janae, we lost Janae last year, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, that was very hurtful, because mm -hmm. she has so much life still, you yeah. know? And um, we lost Esther uh, uh, about, well, 98, 96, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we lost her. And so we just kept going. Um, there, there's so many of my fans and our fans want to see us do stuff now, and, um, you know, everybody's busy and doing yeah. things, it's just not coming together like that. But we decided to do a documentary because there's so many stories that I know mm -hmm. that maybe Jimmy doesn't know yeah. and that Jimmy knows that, that Michael doesn't know, mm -hmm. you know. And so we're going to put it all together and let you see how we saw it. Yeah, through your eyes. Yes. Do you ever get tired of talking about the show? Never. <laughs> No, good. Never. Good. good. Because it was with me all of my life. Ever since I was grown, I was Thelma. Uh -huh. Now, the name was a little different, you know, because they named me Thelma Ann. Mm -hmm. And I, I, you know, I'm Bernadette. <laughs> <laughs> but I forgot all about that Bernadette, and uh -huh. I answered to Thelma anyway. Oh, it's still to this day. To this day. You I don't do. get upset about it. That's oh. so cute. Well, no, and for no. us here in Chicago, it was such an iconic show. Yes, I Cabrini mean, Green. Cabrini yeah. Green. Yes. And so many things have changed since then. Absolutely. Absolutely, it looks like a totally different place. And because of Esther Rowe, we came back to Cabrini Green. She made us come. We, you know, we did the show in Hollywood uh -huh. mm -hmm. on a set. Right. Mm. So, so I tried to make it look just like the, sh the, um, the, the apartment. Yeah. And being that, you know, I'm a girl from Brownsville, from the projects, so I knew exactly what to do with that Thelma, you know? Mm -hmm. And I thank Esther Roll for giving me the opportunity to go up to the producers and tell them who Thelma was. Mm. So I was actually able to create her because, you know, she, I loved the, uh, Esther and she, we were like this. Yeah. So my, um, my role was real small in the beginning, y'all know. Oh yeah, yeah. true group. Yeah. <laughs> you got married. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, said, I said, Mom, I could do more than this. You know, I did study at Juilliard, I can't act. Yeah. And she says, well, leave it up to me. 
and she made that and happen she took for care me. Of it. I well, loved she paved her for that. Way. Yeah. One of your other endeavors um, is talking about Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. You dealt with that. Uh, your father, right? Caregiver no, for no. your father. My, well, my, my father was murdered. Oh, I'm, I apologize. And my mother was only 59. Um, there were four boys in the neighborhood. You know you know, black and black crime at the time. I don't know why, but everybody knew him. Mm -hmm. um, but it was unfortunate that happened to him. And I think because my mother was young, she was 59, um, she, it, it affected her in some way. And I do believe, that's why I wrote the book, The Last Night, that that impact uh, caused her mind to, not that she would not have gotten all Simons, but I think that's part part of it when you go into a shock yeah. in life, mm -hmm. and so she had Alzheimer's, and um, I became her caregiver for eight years. Mm -hmm. You know, we walked through that, and I wrote that book about how do you walk through every little thing. First, you deny it. You know, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a lot of stuff that goes goes on, and they lose their filter. Mm -hmm. So if you know anybody that has Alzheimer's and they say very rude things to you, it's not them. It's just brain damage. Understand, they would never do that. Okay, you have to brush it off. It hurts, yes it does, but it's not them. You have to feel good knowing unf the unfortunate thing that happened to you in your life, all the awareness you've been able to bring, and how many lives you must have changed for having to have gone through that. Well, I thank you so much for that because um, something told me I had to write the book. And um, I, I used to hear people say, don't tell people that. Don't tell people your mother had Alzheimer's. I said, no, she had it. It's the disease, yeah. you know, and who knows, you know. I, I said, I feel obligated to do it to enhance her life. Why should she live and die and just, it, it's over? I said, no, she has a cause too. So she was a great mommy, daddy was a great dad, and, um, but mother and I were very close. She helped me to get to good times, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then one day we're sitting there watching good times in the middle of Alzheimer's, and she looked at Thelma, because she loved that show, yeah. for some reason. <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> and she would look at Thelma and JJ fight and everything, and then she looked at me one day and she said, you know, that's a cute little old girl. Oh. <laughs> That's adorable. Oh. The impact yeah. that you had. And Still I, touched her. Yeah. She knew a connection, but I didn't look like that yeah. anymore. I look like this, so yeah. it wasn't me to her. Right. You know, and I said, yeah, mommy, she's a cute little old girl. And, you know, it was like a knife in my heart that twisted. Mm -hmm. So from that moment on, I said, you know, when this thing is done, because you know how Alzheimer's does us. And um, I said, I'm going to um, form a, a foundation in her honor called Remembering the Good Times, yeah. an Alzheimer's foundation. And that's really how it became. It's not just because I was on good times, but yeah. she was watching good times. Yeah. That's you know, beautiful. isn't that something? Yeah. It all fell in place. It all fell in it place. It fell in place. And I, I just want to just say that if, you, if you're caring for someone with Alzheimer's, um, you have to be very patient. You know, they, they say things over and over and over and over, and I answer the same question over and over, and uh, the, the sky is pink or purple, it has some dots in it that day, you say, yeah, I see that. Yeah. It's over. Yep. They forget. Mm -hmm. You know, don't fight with them. Yeah. And it's something that they do. They have a, a, a connection. They know when someone is hurting them or, or mean to them. So whenever I would have someone sit in with my mom and say, oh, she's difficult, she's difficult, they had to go, because yeah. I know. She's not difficult. Gonna, yeah. She wasn't difficult. She was a calm one. Because her, her Alzheimer's was basically in the back of the brain. Yeah. But if you do it in the frontal lobe, you get more aggressive. I just want to let you know that. Well, thank you for everything you do. Oh, thank it's you. wonderful. Thank and you, you are thank changing you so many lives. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you.